Hi, I'm Dave Vita with Camden Door Controls and we'll go through the configuration app, the Improx BLE for the Improx controller. You will go to the store, if you have an Android phone, you go to the Google uh, Play Store, if you have, have Apple, you will go to the Apple Store and you would simply tap there and then you would type in the name of the app and in this case it's Improx BLE and then the icon for Improx BLE will pop up, you tap it and you would simply install. Once the app is installed, open and you get permissions and you notice that when you're in proximity of your smartphone to the controller 30 meters you will see that the controller MAC address will automatically pop, pop up you simply tap it and then it will take you to the greeting screen and the default is the admin and the, obviously the password default is admin admin. You would connect and it will go through the process of communicating from your smartphone to the controller. And then you would have all these prompts that tell you exactly what we're looking for. This only appears on the initial install. In this case the general configuration screen you will see that the equipment name and you would normally put in your uh, name uh, one on one Main Street in here, um, and then your anti-passback. If you want anti-passback, we'll come back through all these features. But right now, we just immediately want to get you up and running quickly. You hit next. I said, do you want to configure the schedule now? He said, yes. You go here, and now it'll take you to the timetables. And again, you, you have a prompt that tells you what we're looking for on the on the configuration. Usually, it's um, eight to four thirty, so you have a schedule, and we put the defaults already in there and they have a name standard. You can change that name to whatever you want to do, like Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, whatever name you, you see appropriate that's going to remind you of that schedule. Then once all that's done, you can see that public holidays, Sundays, special days, hit validate. And then it's going to take you to the relays and it's going to ask you what you want to do with the relays and how you want the relays to function. Again, you get the prompt. It tells you a momentary is active for one second, by stable, goes toggles on and on. And then you have third one, is uh, by stable, which is latching. You can latch on or latch off when you trigger with your credentials. And then it, it tells you about the credentials, and we'll come back to the screen as well. So then, as you go through all this, you can see the really one, really two. We have all the defaults in place. And then you hit next. And then it goes to the group configurations. And again, we have some default settings for you already. We have the standard and the type. And in, in here, you can distinguish what type of uh, credentials you want to use for the group configurations and the scheduling you assign. Again, we'll go back to this. And then validate. Then it takes you to the user management menu. In the user management menu, you just simply hit add user, and you would type in your ID number of your credentials. One nice feature of this app, though, we also have an ID read. So if you have the card reader, or if you so choose to use a remote, I simply push the button and the controller automatically takes that ID number and fills it in the field for you. You don't have to type in the ID number. And then you type in obviously the family username and the, you know, typical John Smith and then you're good. And then you hit done and you add. User security added. And if you go back to your user management, you notice that the name uh, appears on the list. And as you add more and more users, this list is going to fully populate. You're done. Actually, essentially, now if I use my remote, you're going to notice that you have already have access to the building. And we go through and you look at history, you get to see the events, and now you see that what we've done, what we already we connected to the controller, and we validated and we enrolled a transmitter for the controller. All that's done on the initial install. So you can see that all took place under three minutes. Now we're going to show how to add virtual remote credentials to the controller and you would go to the configuration app. So we go to configuration app and it's very similar to what you've done before by adding a remote or a card credential. You would add user. Here you would type in the ID number of the virtual remote that you got by email or text message or if the person came in and told you what the ID number was. Let's pick 838-9355, done. Because it's a virtual remote, you must tap this icon here, virtual remote control, and then you would type in the name of the person, you know, who gave you that virtual remote, and done. 
add. And very similar to all the other credentials, it's now going to appear on the list here. But there's a star beside it. That little icon star tells you it's a virtual remote. Okay. When you tap on it, you go say that, hey, it's unrestricted users, so all the permissions uh, that you would normally do for a credential applies here as well. Okay. And you're done. So now what you see, um, once we've configured the controller and you saw how simple it was to enroll the credentials, let's go and dissect each individual menu item that we've gone through. Here you also have on the menu the language. Obviously uh, you have the English, French, and Spanish that you can see. So the first thing obviously is you want to go through your, your central settings. This is where you establish your equipment name. Here you would tap this field, equipment name field, and you would put in something that's going to be relevant to you. In this case, well, let's pick like 100 Main Street. All right. And the MAC address is determined by the controller that you have. Anti-passback, that feature enables you to, like the name implies, preventing people from passing their credentials to somebody else and having a double entry. So when you enable that, that is good for applications like parking, so you have to tap in and tap out. So if you're controlling the number of parking spaces, this is a good feature to uh, apply. Or if you're concerned about people sharing their credentials with other people in your facility. Then you see uh, the default for we only use encrypted remote controls, uh, prevent people from cloning your, your remotes. And we have a default of uh, summer, winter, USA, and Canada. Well, that is the daylight savings times. So then on the 365 day a year, we automatically uh, activate the daylight savings times for North America, and therefore your timelines and your history is always going to be accurate. Okay? From here, you were talk we'll talk about facility code management. If you tap on facility code management, here you would type in the facility code that you use for your credentials. Every 26-bit Wigan uh, credential box of cards, you know the facility code could be any number from 1 to 255. Here you are typing the facility code of the credentials you have. Um, if you're using Camden credentials, it might be 37 or 32. And what that does is that the ID number that appears in the history lines up to the number that's printed on the card. So that it makes it a little bit more easier for the property manager to uh, manage. Then you see down here, deletion of expired users. This is a nice feature if you want to um, have the, when you sign out these credentials and you say that, hey, I, I want to give it to the trades and you have an expiry date after, let's say, one week of working on the site, it automatically deletes or expires that credential from working. So it also automatically manages your database so you don't get a bloated database. And then um, obviously you can extend that period how long you want to have a grace period beyond that if that's what expired sends number of days for. Once all that has been set up, you would hit validate. Yeah. And then the system would say, confirm that all those settings have been saved. Okay. From here, you can see that you also have some other icons. The other icons that you see is relay, license, um, firmware update, factory reset, and clear history. We'll come back to these. The first one I'd like to uh, talk about is the relay. You click on relay. Here, you'll see that the same menu we looked at previously. But let's go down in details of all, all these. You can activate the relay or deactivate the relays, as you can see here. And then the mode, the three types of modes, as we explained before, is momentary, time, and bi-stable. Momentary means it's going to activate for one and a half seconds. Time means that you're able, when I click on here, you notice that the menu changes, and now you have the ability to have the relay activate for a time period in hours and minutes and seconds. Okay. And then the third one is buy stable. Now the buy stable is like latching. So if you present a credential, the relay will latch on. If you present the credential again, the relay will latch off. Some applications may require that. Typically, most people use the momentary. Then you have conditional input and a door contact. So conditional input is, is usually uh, used for parking facilities and you have to, we call it a validation or a loop detector. So you want to make sure that the vehicle is directly in front of the gate. So what you do there is that you have a conditional input. Now you have to obviously in the controller, you have to wire that loop detector into the controller to make sure that the vehicle is within two or three feet of the barrier gate before the credential is read. So that's a, a nice feature for parking facilities. Door contact, obviously. If you have a door contact on the controller, then we can do a lot more uh, 
monitoring capabilities of the product. And um, I'll show you later how that affects the other features on really number two. So let's put it off for now and we'll come back to it. Now you also have the scheduling of really one. So you can have a standard, never or always, on the reading of the reader for that really one. And then you have a feature called lock unlock feature. So you can also have the ability so the really could automatically unlock that Monday to Friday nine to five schedule. So let's let's pick that. Let's say standard what we had in there. Now the lock that really will activate automatically on that schedule. And we know that on the schedule we had it Monday to Friday, 8 to 4.30. That door will automatically open or the gate will automatically open. Now you also notice as soon as I did that, you'll see a new uh, icon pop up. It's the first person in delay. That's a nice little feature. What that does for you is that it means that it's not going to activate the door to automatically open it first thing in the morning and Monday to Friday unless somebody who has already been pre-authorized when they smite their credential or the remote, then that schedule becomes active. It's not until that first person in delay, if you click on that, the lock and unlock schedule will only be activated if the first person in delay means when it's, this is activated, when I have a valid credential or remote in the database, then that schedule will become active. So it helps in the use cases that here in Canada, we call them snow days. If a person uh, doesn't come to work early because of snow, and we don't want strangers into that facility or the parking facility, at least one person of the management staff will have to authenticate before that gate or door will be open. Relay 2, um, again the same thing that we talked about on Relay 1. The difference is you notice that it has an alarm capability on here. So once you hit alarm, you notice that you have other features that pop up on the menu. And here you see user, any pass back, uh, access denied by location, all these alarm capabilities. And Relay 2 now becomes your central reporting of alarms. It's not an access point now. Relay 2 is being tied to a now seater, i.e. I tied into a horn, siren, a strobe, or um, some central monitoring capability if you so desire. One, two, three, four, five. Now, if I go back to Relay 1 and I hit the door contact, saying that, hey, on this door one, I now have a door contact. You now notice one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've added three more capabilities. Because I have the door contact on really one, I'm also able to monitor like intrusion, door force open, door jar. Okay, that might be important for your facility. So when you do that, you hit validate and obviously all those settings that you picked have been saved. Now here you can do, um, Factory reset, we talked about. Firmware update, if we have any enhancements to the controller, this is a very easy way of done through the app. And license, this is where you would add a virtual remote license. And we'll come back to that. So now let's go back to the other screens. Now we've done the central, let's look at schedule. We go to scheduling and we tap on scheduling. You see the standard that we've already provided for you uh, out of the box. And then you can see all, if you click here, you'll see a condensed display mode. So this is the Monday to Friday, Sundays only, and weekends. Okay, makes your job a little easier when you're doing that. One thing too, on Monday to Friday, you have four slots. So not only if I tap on here, you notice that I have a slot eight to four thirty, but I can also change that to say a morning shift and then afternoon shift. So you can have different shifts within that schedule. And obviously the holidays, you basically you would tap in here and you can time period on the schedule of the holidays, whatever it's, uh, uh, it's a short day, nine uh, to 12. Okay, you validate. That's all about scheduling. Holidays, you tap in, you add a day, you're easy. Um, December 25th, you can have it recurring every year. Tap that icon, hit add, and you're good. Right? You can also have special days, whatever your uh, company or your 
our management staff so desires you can assign special days with that as well. So now we did the central, we did a schedule. Now we just go to group settings. Group settings enables you to manage all your uh, ID numbers in your database. It makes it a lot easier so you can group certain people. You've got staff, you could have trades, you could have maintenance uh, within that. So then if you have a standard, we have the defaults all set up for you. And within each group, you can decide what type of credentials uh, they could use, i.e. a two-button transmitter um, and a badge or a card credential. Or you want to restrict them to only badges if, if people who only uh, needs to, for remote from vehicle access. Scheduling, notice that you can pick what schedules you want for each, each group. And then you click on relay, you can see how that group is going to function. You can channel one, two, three, four. So you have a four button transmitter. You can decide which button is going to activate for that group and which reader, reader one and reader two within that group. Okay. A bypass credential entry. Remember we talked about that uh, a validation of credential uh, validation on the ID numbers. So here you can bypass it if you sort for that group. So they won't be needing to be validated. They can open the gate five feet away uh, versus being validated three feet in front of it. And then you can also have the ability that this specific group doesn't, the anti pass back does not apply. So you have that capability. Okay. And then you can add a new group. So we add a new group, group one. Let's say that I just want um, transmitters only to be used and they're going to make sure that they only work on the standard. And then on the relays, you can see that because it's a transmitter, it's only going to have the channels uh, highlighted. So in this case, channel one, let's say we can pick channel three, which, whichever channel you want them to use. So now you got multiple groups and you're done on the group side. Okay, okay let's go to user management. So now when I add a user, let's type in an ID number. Uh, won't be that many numbers usually. And then you would type in the family name, right? First name, Bob. <laughs> and uh, remember with the user groups, here you can see, now we added that new user group that's gonna up, up, uh, appear. You can have unrestricted. Here we're gonna say, no, we're gonna have it, um, so we have it automatically expires one week from today. So that's where you put that in. And any pass back is blank here. Now, if I had activated the any pass back, it would show the status of that credential. Okay, and then you just add, add, you just click add, and like before, it's now going to appear on the list. So now you have this other credential here. Now, I just want to quickly show you, you go to central, you activate any pass back, you validate, now it's saved. Now we go back to uh, user management, you notice that you have another icon that says reset anti pass back, but now when I click on here, you'll see it says status unknown. But if I was to click in or click out, it would tell me the status of uh, John Smith. So I go back to user management and I look at John Smith, you now see I'm exiting. So it gives you the status of he's exiting or he's entering the facility and what state he's in. And if you so desire, you say, hey, you know, John mistakenly shared his credential, you can always do an auto reset right here. So you can reset your anti-pass back. Session management. Session management enables you to configure when people log into this app, what they want to see. So maybe you have a site manager. You can have a site manager that will have a unique user uh, login and his password and what they can do. You can do adding and deleting cards, user management, he can do backup, yes or no. He can do history capability, yes or no. History without username, really commands, scheduling, or group settings. So you can see what he can do and not. And obviously when you pick these uh, selections, his uh, capabilities and his menu will be corresponding to whatever you select here. And on the menu menu, I want to bring to your attention the backup. Obviously, we always encourage any uh, access control system, you do backup, backup, backup. So once you've done all that work of adding the names, adding the schedules, configuring the groups, uh, we always encourage you to save all, and that will save this file onto your smartphone, and that enables you to restore um, that controller as it gets damaged or if you forgot anything. So I always encourage everybody to obviously save the database that you've done, and then you can do an automatic restore when you connect to that controller in the past. 
One of the nice features as well, a lot of people like to export the users. So you have multiple controllers and you say, hey, I want to take the same information of the users and port it over to another controller. This is where you would do that. So you would obviously import all that information and you would save it in your files. It, obviously you can see that happening. And then you would export it to the other, to the other controller from that app. Usually you would find that when you uh, save it on a smartphone, it's going to be under your download folders on your smartphone. And then you would pull it, pull it up from there. It would be a CSV file. One of the uh, icons that you have here is an import CV601RS45. If you have an older controller, you would click here. And what we have the ability is download all that information from that controller. And then you can restore the, all that data information on that older controller to our new current Inprox BLE controller. Okay? You would have to contact tech support for that because it's a hardwired connection to the controller with a 45 and they walk you through the wiring requirements for that. And if there's any information here that you're not clear about, we have convenient help selection here. You hit instructions and all this information is going to be available to you on the fly. And you see all this information that I just talked about in more detail. There's a lot of information on the website as well and I encourage you to take a look at that. We also have a tech support team available for any type of questions that you may have. Thank you.